This is Cat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I am here today to unbox my Diamond Art Club Black Friday and Cyber Monday haul. I got quite a few paintings as you can see from the size of my box. There is not room in my filming area for this box but I thought it would be quite funny to show you. Um, I did go a little mad because I'd been saving up because I really enjoy their Black Friday sale. It's, it's a really good opportunity to get a good discount on some new kits and I had saved up money so that I could buy a few paintings if there were a few that I liked, and there were. So I'm gonna shift this off the table because it's just in my way, <laughs> and then I will get them out and show you what I got. Okay, so first things first, while I was placing orders, because I did actually place three orders over the, the, the weekend, in every one, I think I added some places because the discount codes were really good this year. So on Black Friday, Diamond Art Club gave us 30% off site wide, including obviously the new releases. And then for Cyber Monday, they gave us 25% off. So between the three orders that I placed, I have picked up three new single places using that discount and one more 10 tip placer and two 12 tip placers because I'm sort of in between those, those two sizes at the moment for square kits. For round kits, I use a smaller placer, um, but I have a few of those already and I have enough. So yeah, I got those because they're not cheap. <laughs> like these ones, I think full price are about £19. So getting them at a good discount was really worthwhile for me. And then my paintings. Okay, so I'm going to try and do this in some semblance of the order I kind of decided to, to buy them, if that makes sense. So first of all, I got Inside a Fairy's Dream by Becca Tyndall. This is a humongous painting. It is 106 centimetres by 70 centimetres and I have not yet worked out how I'm going to show you. Probably not very well is the answer. Um, but yeah, I, I love bright colours. Anyone who knows me knows I love bright colours. In my diamond paintings, I'm always chatting about it and that is what this painting is. She's the artist that had um, Cosmic Trip and then there's another one called, I think it's Windows of the Soul or something. And I have Cosmic Trip, I haven't done it yet. Um, but this one, I, I just, I really, really loved. It just seemed fun. It's gonna be fun to diamond paint with those colors. So that was my first painting. And then, there was a day when I think there were three paintings that came out and got previewed and I thought, yes, yes, yes. Um, so, right, <laughs> I'm just rummaging around in the box. Mother's Nature by Deborah Malcolm was my next kit. This is a painting that came out in a choice of round or square drills. I do work with round drills as well. Um, I'll often choose them from other companies. I will happily work on them from Diamond Art Club, but given the choice, I do always go for squares. So in squares, it's 45.1 by 65.5 centimeters because the way Diamond Art Club does it, just in case you don't know, is that they render the picture exactly the same. And then because round drills are a bit bigger than square drills, the round painting will be bigger, which is a cool difference, I think, compared to other companies who do the same size painting and then the render is different and you get a bit less detail with rounds. So yeah, I wonder if other companies will start to do it that way. But anyway, I digress. I love this piece. I really enjoy Deborah Malcolm's artwork. I've done an evening stroll um, and I have one or two others from her in my stash. Um, and this one, I mean, it's in some ways it's quite similar to an evening stroll, the colours and so on, but it's giraffes and it's squares and I just, it's beautiful. Beautiful, I had to get this one. Next up, I got me a Spangler. I got cute as a button. This is another one. Oh, look at that glare on that. Apologies for that. My, my new filming lights are making my videos less dim, but they do add a fair amount of glare to the painting, uh, particularly while they're still in the, the plastic covers. It'll be better later. So Cutest Button, again, it came in a choice of round or square, so I got square and it's 45 by 45 centimetres. So another nice small one. That was definitely something I was going for this time. Apart from the Becca Tyndall, I didn't want huge paintings because I've, I've reached a point where I have so many really large paintings in my stash. 
um, because I love those pieces. I love the really big detail pieces. So they're the ones that often call to me. But then at the same time, once I have them, I don't always feel like working on a really big painting and knowing it's going to take me like six to eight weeks because then I don't get, you know, the fun of completion very often. So I'm trying to only buy really big paintings if I absolutely love them. We'll see how well that goes. But yeah, that, that's the plan. And I definitely consciously picked some smaller paintings um, so that I would have more of those in my stash. So, oops. <laughs> The last one that I bought first thing on Black Friday morning because it really was first thing here in the UK early access started at 5am so there were a bunch of us that all set our alarms and we were chatting a little bit in a group chat um, before buying them and then after five o'clock it was straight back to sleep um, so yeah Jaguar of the Crescent Moon is another one that I picked up. Katrina Coltes is another artist that I kind of follow from Diamond Art Club and buy a lot of the pieces that they bring out. And again, it was small. It was 49.6 by 49.6 centimetres. Um, and that really drew me to it as well. Like I loved the piece, but I also loved that it was a smaller one. So yes, I picked up this as well. And then... On my way back from the school run, a little bit later that morning, I was still thinking about this other painting that I had initially ruled out. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go back and get that. Because the discount code's really good and I can get more places, etc., etc. So I went back and got Domestic Cat. So this is my only round painting. Um, and this is by Katie Lim Limpscomb. I thought it was Lipscomb. I don't know if that's a typo or if I'm misremembering her name. It's 50.7 by 78.7 centimetres. And yeah, I love cats. What can you say? Cats and bright colours. Like, how am I supposed to resist a painting like this? <laughs> and then last but not least, so that is all of my Black Friday purchases. But then Cyber Monday rolled around and there were another, what was it? 25 new releases, I believe. Uh, with a 25% off discount code. And I got one which long time followers of my channel may be a little surprised because it's not my usual style. But basically I got one of the Margaret Morales that came out. I got Satura. Um, oh, <laughs> try and hold it so you can actually see. Um, it's a square painting, 55.8 by 86 centimeters. And it's not focused, is it? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I don't normally go for very people-y paintings, unless they have animals in as well. Like, this, very much me. This, not so much, typically. I don't know why. I don't make the rules in my head. I just, I follow them, sort of, some of the time. <laughs> but Margaret Morales is, is one of those artists that's sort of an exception to that little rule about what I like. And I'd often admired her artwork with uh, DIY Moonshop or Dye Moon Shop, I never know how to pronounce it, but they no longer exist as a shop, so it's, it's kind of a moot point now. But they used to license her artwork, but they were a very expensive shop to buy from. Um, the painting would cost more than the painting does from Diamond Art Club. The shipping was expensive, so I never actually bought from them. I only have one painting from them in my stash, and that's one that I got on a D stash. Um, and I also, I heard some things about how they did things and I think earlier on they were better and then they made some changes and people weren't so happy with the way they rendered paintings. So it never seemed like it was going to be worth the cost. But now Diamond Art Club has licensed Margaret Morales. Um, and yeah, there were three new releases from her on Cyber Monday. Only one of the three really particularly called to me and that was this one. But yeah, I watched the sneak peek that Nurse Rachel and Crafts did and I just thought this one was gorgeous. And it's nice to do something a bit different anyway. It's nice if not all my paintings are the same. So, right, how am I going to do this? I guess I'll work through them in the order that I just showed them to you. Um, and I'm gonna take a peek at each one. I'm not gonna spend ages on each one because we'll be here all day, um, but yeah. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've cleared the others away and I have Inside a Fairy Stream, which I will <laughs> do my best to show you as well as I can. I'll, um, I'll have to do a pan over it and just try and get as much of it as I can in that because even that is gonna be difficult in the space I'm in with it being quite so long. But yeah, we'll see how we get on. 
this kit did sell out at early access and at general release so as far as I know it is currently out of stock but hopefully it will be back so you can sign up for notifications if it's one you would want to get. Right. Oh, where's my toolkit? <laughs> I hear it rattling in the box, but it won't come out. <laughs> that was stuck down the bottom, that's unusual. So I'll take a quick peek at this. I'm not going to go through all the toolkits in great depth. I'll, I'll generally just pick out the washi and the cover minders to show you. Um, but yeah, let's take a quick peek at this one because it is the first one. Oops. <laughs> okay, so I got an orange pen and comfort grip. They was colour coordinate, which is fun. I got some branded tweezers because this is a square kit. They have a cover because they are sharp. So always keep them covered up. Two plates of the heart-shaped pink wax. Make sure that you peel off the plastic cover if you're gonna use this. I did not do that the first time that I done painted and I couldn't work out how I was supposed to stab it in according to the instructions. Washi tape, ooh, that's a really pretty one. Really purple and lovely. <laughs> I got a four and seven placer. You do get these in every kit. They're the thin plastic ones, which work very well. I actually tend to now use Diamond Art Club's stainless steel placers. As, as you saw, I've been stocking up on those. Oh, I won't focus. Um, but yeah, these, these do the job very well without having to spend that money. Sorry, my camera is absolutely awful for focusing on the wrong things. And I got another one of these. <laughs> a friend had one of these cover minders and I was really jealous because I thought it was one of the sweetest ones I'd seen. And then, yeah, I think this must be my fourth or fifth one that I've got now. Uh, maybe I should give a couple of them away. Um, yeah, so cover minders, if you're not sure what they do, you put the little magnet on the back of your painting, then you hold this bit on the front, in front of the plastic cover where you want it held out of your way. They connect through the painting and then the plastic cover is secured. And then I have a tray and stopper. If you ever get a Diamond Art Club toolkit and you get this random bit of plastic in and you think, what on earth is that for? It's because it's supposed to go in here as a stopper. I'm not sure if it goes that way or the other way, but either way, <laughs> it is a stopper just to make it a little easier to keep your drills in your tray if you're shaking them around to line them up. Okay, let's pop all of those away. Oh, I forgot the baggies. You get a little roll of baggies as well. The small sticker that comes in Diamond Art Club kits, I like to put on the side of my box. So I'll do that now because after I have filmed this, these will all go into, well, I will attempt to put them all into the cupboard of doom, which used to be a wardrobe, but is now just <laughs> a cupboard that reminds me of my excesses with diamond painting buying. And actually they're not even contained to one cupboard. They're also encroaching in, in the other wardrobe that my husband and I share. And he's not very impressed to be honest. But anyway, <laughs> that's enough about me and my inability to not buy things. So um, Diamond Art Club paintings come in this branded dust cover. To keep it nice and clean. And I will attempt to get this open without ripping it. And I succeeded for once. <laughs> now. There's one other thing about this painting. <laughs> it comes with a lot of colour drills. <laughs> Two bags. I've never had that before with Diamond Art Club. So um, I'll get onto that in a moment. Just before I do that, um, you do get in every uh, Diamond Art Club painting a thank you for purchase leaflet it's got tips and tricks it's got links to their social media accounts and their facebook group so there's some helpful stuff in here there's also discount codes um there's 10 off your next purchase i'm not sure if that's one time use or not 
there's 20% off your first purchase through their app and that is a one-time use one and I'll just mention this while I'm looking at this kit I won't bang on about it but I do actually have a couple of discount codes of my own in the description box they are affiliate codes you can use cat 10 for ten dollars or the equivalent in your local currency off your uh, first purchase from diamond art club or the one that generally works out slightly better value for people is cat 20 which will give you 20 percent off your first purchase from diamond art club only valid on your first one and um, there are loads and loads of discount codes available for diamond art club please don't feel obligated to use mine but just don't pay full price whatever you do <laughs> use a discount code <laughs> okay so here's the artwork these sticker sheets are really useful for going in your logbook or sticking in your storage container so you know which is which if you've got lots of whips look at all those bright colors amazing it's like a rainbow i love it and on the other page 93 colors this is the most colors i have ever had in a diamond art club kit wow sir I don't think it's the most they've ever had. I think they did have one that had 99, but I could be wrong on that. But either way, it's a lot. <laughs> but they're so gorgeous. So many beautiful, bright colours. I can't wait. Okay, so four of them are AB drills, Aurora Borealis drills, which means they have an extra special extra special coating on them, which catches the light and just gives accents and prettiness. And that looks to be a sort of creamish beige one, a pink one, a yellow one, and a blue one. So I'll try and take a peek for those in a bit. And then at the bottom, I have got three fairy dust drills. Is that a blue or a cream? I can't really tell. A green one and a white one. Um, and also I've got two of the new colours that Diamond Art Club offers. So if it starts, if it's got four digits and starts with a six, it will be one of the new drills, drill colours that Diamond Art Club has started offering. Because they make their own drills in-house, they've actually started to manufacture them in a few extra colours that don't generally exist in the DMC range for diamond painting. If you're not aware, DMC codes are based on floss originally, so they come from things like cross stitch and tapestry and that kind of thing. Um, and there is a much bigger range of colours in floss than there is in diamond painting drills. So that's why sometimes renders won't be quite spot on in terms of colour because you can't get quite close enough. So Diamond Art Club is tackling that issue by making their own. And I have heard people say it's often the purples they're doing it with. Um, so yeah, two shades of purple in those new colours that's in this one okay right do I dare open these up to have a look because <laughs> if I don't get them rolled up well again I don't know I'll have a little peek and see how I get on so straight away there is a fairy dust trail just wait for that to come into focus So you can hopefully see the glitter effect. That's what a fairy dust drill is. It has this subtle glittery effect on the top, which just makes it a little bit different from the normal drills. And then by contrast, here is an AB, different color obviously, but you can probably just about see that that has got a much glitzier coating on it. Very cool. Are there any others in here? I'm not going to let these unravel, I'm afraid, even though that means I can't show them too properly. Because I just think with there being so many to get in there, <laughs> if I if I lose track of, you know, how to do up the, the bag, it's going to be difficult. Oh, hang on. Right, so that was one of... Right, the one that I wasn't sure if it was a blue or whatever is a sort of off-white. And then the other side, I have got a bag of... A, a more whitey white one um, so yeah very very pretty get those ones away and I'll do the same for the other pack okay oh look at those bright colors oh I'm gonna be in heaven working on this <laughs> it's got all the colors I love okay 
there's one of those new ones. Uh, and unless you're incredibly familiar with the DMC codes of drills, it's not maybe going to mean that much to you. But it's just kind of cool to know this is a shade that no one else is producing right now. Let's see, can I find anything in here? Lots of shades I think I've never worked with before. So there is the blue AB and the sort of creamy beige AB. Oh, hi Harry. And yeah, that's all I can find without unraveling it. Oh, no, 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 I tell a lie. There is a yellow AB just tucked away in there. Yeah, I know some people really like to see all the drills, so please forgive me for not unraveling them. Um, but yeah, I just, I really want to be able to put this away without it busting out of the box. I'm forever finding diamond paintings with the box coming away at the seams because I've not rolled them up quite thin enough. <laughs> I have to tape up the box. But again, I got a lot of paintings to get through, so I'm sure you will forgive me. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to roll it back on itself. I don't think I've ever worked on a painting this big. I have had a few ones this big and I think they've all ended up being de-stashed because I couldn't see myself working on such big paintings. You know, when you've had them sitting there in your stash for a while and you think, mm, is it ever really going to reach the top of the queue? But realistically, it's only a few centimetres bigger than, you know, the next size one that I've done. So it shouldn't make too much difference. My stomach started rumbling. I hope you can't hear it. I think after I've looked at this painting, I will need to go and have a little break and have some lunch because you don't want to hear that. <laughs> Take you where my microphone is and probably pick it up. Okay. So let me try and do it bit by bit like this. <laughs> so here is the right hand side. This is the blue green side. <laughs> and that's the top of it there. And then <laughs> so much painting. And then here's the middle. Oh, look at that little house. <laughs> Honestly, the way they render things is great because actually in person, I can't tell that that's a house. It's like weird and blocky. But when I look in the viewfinder, it is so clearly this little house off in the distance at the end of the yellow brick road. <laughs> And then there's the alien section at the top, obviously, yeah. <laughs> and then over here, here's the blacky pink section. <laughs> so there's some mushrooms. What is this? It's like a pond or something. And a fairy, because it's a fairy's dream. This is what fairies dream about, guys. I'd forgotten that bit, because I always forget the names. <laughs> and the tree trunk and little moon and pinky purple sky, it's lovely. Wowza! I mean, it's huge, but you're not gonna get bored, are you? Because it, like every strip of the painting is gonna be like a different style and a different thing going on. And there's all these little pictures within a picture. So yeah, that's gonna be really fun to work on. I hadn't thought about that. Not wild about that bit because I have kind of trypophobia so I don't really like lots of small holes but I'll keep telling myself it's actually a pile of rocks it's actually a pile of rocks it'll be fine <laughs> Harry Harry off my canvas please Harry 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 right Harry is biting my canvas which isn't okay we don't want claws in the canvas I'll just here we are for the Harry fans here he is um, but yeah, <laughs> he's, he's not going to stay on here because he is actually doing damage to my canvas. Come on. So, um, yeah, I will attempt to pan over this as much as I can. I might have to kind of do it in two goes. <laughs> um, 
and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to see what I can do about picking out special drills. But yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you a quick glimpse into them, but I don't think I'm going to find them all. And I'm really conscious of how long this video will get if I spend the usual amount of time that I would on, on an unboxing on every piece. So yeah, I will be back shortly. <laughs> bits of if not huge amounts of color blocking like small blocks of color looking at this that I think will, will help it to not take too long and I also don't see any kind of mega confetti there's small sections that are a bit more detailed but overall it's not too bad so um, I said I'd try and pick out some special drills I've got codes one two three four um, so looking at this side of the painting here is some of that kind of beige AB and up there I see it in the kind of the UFO oh, which you can't see oh dear this is gonna be impossible isn't it <laughs> the pink I see a lot over on this side and then in the little mushrooms down here and the yellow is in the sky around this and up there I think all the UFO bits, if there's a special drill in that colour, they're in that section because that's really, really bright and vibrant. And then the fours, the blue fours, are there any of those that I can see? There's a little tiny patch of them over here. Um, they are hiding from me. Does that mean they're more over the other side? Like, Let's have a look at the other side of the painting. Where are those fours? They're really hiding from me. By which I mean I can't see them for looking. <laughs> and they're probably right there. Ah, there's some down here. They don't stand out as much. That's what it is. <laughs> oh yeah, there's, there's... Right, okay, yeah. There are quite a few <laughs> down in this bottom section. Um... And then I see some threes, some yellow ABs all through these flowers and some pinks as well in the pink sections. And then up there in the castle, I see quite a lot up there and, and in the rainbow behind it. And then the fairy dust drills are always harder to spot for me, but I will have a quick go. So the, the dot that is the white one, the castle thingamajig is like chock-a-block full of those and they're outlining the rainbow and they're on this tree and then this unicorn is it? Um, and all through this section so there's loads and loads of those ones. And then the other ones, an N and a sort of squirrel. I do see some of the N's up in the tree. The squirrely one I see a bit over here and all through this section so the kind of mountains behind the castle the icy mountains and then over on this side there's quite a lot more of the N 
um, again up in the what should we call it the alien section and then over here they're kind of lily pads and quite a lot more of the white one just again outlining things with that lovely fairy dust drill here's a few more of the off-white ABs as well and yeah okay so seven special drills and they are kind of everywhere I mean you expect a lot of them in a painting like this really don't you it's so bright and colorful it absolutely makes sense okay very very happy with this it's such a gorgeous painting and it's going to be so much fun to work on so that's inside a fairy's dream I am going to um, take a little break to have some lunch <laughs> Apologies if you have heard my stomach rumbling, but it will soon not be rumbling anymore. And then I will come back and show you the rest of them. Okay, I'm back. I have lunched and I'm cracking on with my next unboxing. So, next up, Mother's Nature by Deborah Malcolm. And as I said, this one came in round and square. I know the square one sold out. I'm not sure what happened with the round one, if that sold out as well. Um, but either way, they will most likely be back, so sign up on the website if you want to be notified when they come back into stock. I love, love, love having some smaller kits in my stash. Really excited. I think actually after Christmas, because currently I'm working on I Choose You from Diamond Art Studio and Myrtle Ho 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 from Diamond Art Club, and I reckon that I should hopefully have both of those finished by the end of this month. Well, depending on how busy I am with Christmas stuff. Anyway, <laughs> earlier, early on next year, I think my plan is probably to work through a few smaller kits, just because I feel like I haven't got many finished this year. Being busier with the shop and that kind of thing, I think it would be nice to focus on ones that I can actually get done. So, let's have a quick peek at the goodies so I got a macaron <laughs> these must be the most commonly given out cover minders these little macarons and nice pretty washi tape there come on camera focus there nice flowery pattern okay I reckon that this one looked like it will work up quite quickly as well. Probably fairly low on confetti, I'm hoping. I know the um, an evening stroll one that I did was, was fairly speedy to get through. And um, her artwork is all sort of in the same style, isn't it? So I'd expect similar for each one. Okay. So what did I get in this one? 60 colours. Ah, oh, yeah, I'd forgotten this. Glow in the dark drills. <laughs> um, only two ABs, a reddish one and a pinkish one, and then two fairy dust drills with the Z, and then a glow in the dark drill. Well, I'll have to have a look at those, won't I? And isn't this painting just gorgeous? So, so pretty. So, is there any normal 310? No, it's just the black. <laughs> it's just the glow in the dark one so glow in the dark drills as you can see these just look like normal drills and to be honest a lot of the time they behave like that too until you charge them you need to charge them properly under a light I think ideally a UV light um, I've done it before with torches and that kind of thing but it I mean the only painting I've done with glow in the dark drills before was quite an old one, so they may be better, but I found that it took quite a lot to charge them up and then it doesn't last that long. But you know what? For me personally, glow in the dark drills isn't a big selling point of a painting. Like it's it's fun to have as an extra, but I'm not that bothered and I probably wouldn't care about keeping them charged. But anyway, lots of people will feel differently to me. So that is what those are. I love that colour. Look at that bright, bright, bright orange red. So as I'm in here, what else can I find? Not a lot. 
<laughs> There's a fairy dust drill. And there is the other fairy dust drill. They're quite similar. Ooh, look at that corally colour. There's some really bright shades in this. I love it. And there's an AB. Very little of it. Um, there's not many of a lot of these. Because I guess it's a small painting but it's still got 60 colours. That inevitably means there's quite a few colours that hardly have any of them in it. Right. But I do have quite a lot of 103. This red AB. There's two fairly fat bags of that. So yeah, that one's plentiful. Look at that colour palette. Actually, you can't see it that well from that side. <laughs> Look at that colour palette. <laughs> All the blacks and things for contrast, but mainly just these really nice, bright, warm colours. Gorgeous. It's actually quite a similar colour palette to the other one I did by Deborah Malcolm. But I don't care, because I did that one earlier on this year. I probably won't get to this one for a little while. And I think it will be worth it. So. Ooh, this is a really, really soft one. <laughs> Just a little mark of something on the back there. Let me roll this back on itself. It's like Christmas has come early unboxing all of these. I should say as well, I had all of these in the UK by Monday, no, Friday the 1st of December. So I ordered very first thing on Black Friday morning and then again about four hours later. And that didn't dispatch over the weekend, but then I ordered again on Monday. And I think they were saying that they were combining orders. So there was a bit of a risk that if you kept ordering, it would push your things back. Uh, I will admit to getting a little bit twitchy because quite a few of my friends had their orders dispatched straight away on the Friday. Someone even had hers on, on the Monday and I hadn't even... Yeah, she had hers on the Monday and then her Cyber Monday order also got dispatched on Cyber Monday and I was still waiting. <laughs> I was trying not to be too jealous. It, it's, Diamond Art Club is very upfront about the fact they don't always do things in order at times like this. They prioritise what will get them all out the quickest overall. But in the end, it was overnight Tuesday going into Wednesday for me that it shipped. And then it got picked up and, and got here by the Friday. So, it, you know, it, it was it was pretty quick. Last year, I waited about two weeks for my kits to be sent. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm not complaining. There it is. Oh, my gosh, this looks like so much fun to work on. It's a really good mixture of blocks of colour and then some more confetti-ish bits for detail. Let me just show you the top. Look at that sky! It's so beautiful! Oh, I can't wait to work on this one. Um, yeah, it's just the colours are absolutely glorious and a lot of this is going to go quite quickly, isn't it? This bottom section has got a lot more chopping and changing, I think. It's not so much blocks of colour as different colours mixed in together down here, but then the sky is much more blocky. So yeah, overall, with it being a fairly small painting as well, it's going to be a satisfyingly quick project and very, very pretty. Okay, am I going to pan over this? Am I going to pan over them all? I, I, I don't know. Um, I think I will pan over this because I can't show you it all in frame at once, but I will see <laughs> with the others. If I can show it all in frame, I probably won't bother. So I'll do that now and then I'll come back and pick out those special drills.
Okay, so special drills. First of all, obviously the black, the standard symbol for black that is often the case, not always, but often. Anything that is black is actually going to be a glow-in-the-dark black. And then I have got symbols one and two for the two ABs. So where are those hiding? I see quite a lot of one in the sky some nice blocks of that and up here as well so that one is used oh and here as well yeah loads of that one getting some sparkly bits in the sky and then two is what was that that was a very pale one wasn't it and there wasn't a lot of it which explains why i'm struggling to find it here is some down here in the reflection in the water this is like the ground line and then this is water with with reflection isn't it so it's it's through some bits of that I can't see it anywhere else though and I am wondering if that's it because I do think it was quite a small bag wasn't it and then I've got a plus symbol and a minus symbol oh that's nice and easy for the two fairy dust drills so loads of those through these these lines of, of light reflected in here I'm trying to move it around a bit because of the reflection of my own lights as well making it harder to see but yeah basically they are through this section here and then the pluses I saw quite a lot yeah so all on this side of the setting sun and a bit up in the sky in the clouds as well so quite a lot of those oh I love it I'm very very happy with this okay moving swiftly on <laughs> okay here I go again with the next one <laughs> on to my Randall Spangler cute as a button I am a big fan of Randall Spangler's work. I've done several draggling pieces. I've, uh, how many? Um, at least four that I can think of off the top of my head. Now I don't collect them. There are plenty that I haven't bought because there are a lot and I don't get through paintings quick enough that I could work on all of those. It would be, you know, I'd be working on them all the time and I'd, I'd get bored. But some of them do grab me a little more than others. I think the size of this is one of the reasons, you know, if this had been done in a bigger size, I'm not sure that I would have leapt on it quite as quickly, but I, I did really fancy this one. As I said, it was available in round and square, so if you're not a square fan, you can get this painting in rounds and it will just be a slightly bigger piece, whereas this is a lovely, nice, small 45 by 45 centimetres. So, oh, getting all in a muddle. I'm surrounded by boxes and like putting things in the wrong places. So, what did I get? What did I get? Oh, another macaron. <laughs> and, oh, I had some of this on another one I looked at recently. It's a lovely washi tape, actually. If it will focus. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm trying to whiz through those bits because I'm conscious of how long this video is going to end up being um, so apologies if I don't take my time over something that um, that you personally would want to see hopefully the balance will be right overall okay I'm so used to getting big paintings from Diamond Art Club that when I get a small one I'm like oh it's so cute okay so 45 colours in cute as a button and again if you buy the round one it will be exactly the same as this it'll just be bigger and um, so all of this would still apply i've got two ab's a sort of beigeish colour and a pale yellow colour and then i have two fairy dust drills a sort of greyish colour and a pink one so quite a lot of bling for a nice small painting i love it and look at those nice bright colours ah, exciting isn't he cute though? It really is cute as a button. I love the tracking so much. You can see one of those ABs there through the side. And are there any of us popping out? No, but yeah. Look at all those lovely bright colours. The blues and the pinks and the brighter greens popping out. Oh, and orange too. Gorgeous. It's so diddy. 
<laughs> it's funny how your perception changes because I know that a lot of people prefer to do smaller diamond paintings and they would consider a 45 by 45 one to be really quite big because they like to do smaller ones that they can whiz through as quick projects. Totally get that. It's just my personal taste is for more detailed pieces, which tends to lead me to bigger ones. So for me, this is, this is petite and very sweet. Oh, look at it. I wonder which of the draglings this is. I, I can't remember what they're called. I think one's called Dragma, possibly. And... No, I can't remember the other one. And I know that there is a way you can tell by the knobs on the tail, um, but that's all I can remember. <laughs> can't remember the names, and even if I could, I wouldn't remember which was which based on that. But there is this whole lore around the draglings. They come from a land called, I think it's Omlandia or something like that. And the idea is that they come through to our world to steal, um, generally to steal sweet things like cookies. But I don't think there's any of that in this one, is there? There's normally food that they're after. This one's just playing with a sewing kit. <laughs> and as usual, one of the things that's quite nice with these is there tends to be quite a lot of bright colour blocking and sections that will go quickly, which you see in the background with the books, which is another staple. There's almost always books of some kind in, in Spangler's works. And then the draggling himself. Actually, this one doesn't look too bad for confetti. Sometimes they can be quite dappled. Um, but no, this one is not so much now. Special drills. So I've got codes one and two, and I see loads and loads of ones in this bottom section. So this, um, what is it? It's, ah, so this is like a piece of fabric that's being worked on with the buttons. And that's got quite a bit of sparkling, which is lovely. And then number two is the pale yellow, and that's up here a little bit in his ears and then speckled through his haunch here and his arms so yeah that's a highlight for the dragging draggling and then h is one of the fairy dust drills and that is these needles sticking out of this um oh i can't think what the word is but you know this 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 thingamajig this needle holder <laughs> um yeah, so that's where the H one is, and A is the symbol for the pink one, and that is in the buttons, and over here on this spool of thread, which is very fun. Oh, that's going to be such a satisfying project to work up. Let me just move it around so you can see all of it without the glare. So there's the, the bottom section, and then the top section you would have been able to see so yeah he's a real cutie I think that would be a really nice relief maybe after one that is a bit more one-dimensional in terms of color tone or it's got a darker tone to it all of those kind of things that's that's when I reach for something like a spangler okay back into the box he goes so the last of my bleary-eyed 5am purchases was Jaguar of the Crescent Moon. And this one, again, as I said, came in rounds and squares, so you do have the choice. I've seen it said that Diamond Art Club is testing out the popularity of doing kits in both shapes. And if it's popular enough, they will potentially do more and more in that. I do wonder how it would work for bigger ones, though. You know, the kind of pieces that... They do in squares and like that Becca Tyndall, 105 by 70 centimetres in squares. Like that would have to be absolutely enormous. And actually at the moment, the, the boxes go by the, the smaller length of the painting, don't they? So the biggest boxes they have are seven, will fit a 70 centimetre painting. And I've never seen them do a painting where one of the like both of the dimensions were bigger than that so they'd have to like bring out bigger boxes and then that would up shipping I, I don't know I don't know if they'll ever do all of them um maybe it will always be something that's limited to smaller pieces but either way I think it is great that people are now getting this option because some people have very strong preferences don't they which I get I personally like to do both and I I like would normally have a round on the go to give me a bit of a break from squares. Increasingly over time, I don't feel like I need that. I'm quite happy just doing squares, but I do still enjoy rounds if they're done well. Oh, 
What's my goodies this time? Is it another macaron? Ooh. No, it's a rose. <laughs> That's lovely. I like these small roses they do. If I can get it to focus. It's very pretty. It's very delicate looking, isn't it? Nice strong magnet too. And then here is my... What's the word? I was going to say release paper. No, here is my washi tape for this one. <laughs> ah, okay. Let's get them away. I think I got my first Katrina Coltes painting last Black Friday, actually. Leap of Courage. Which I did end up de-stashing because I decided in the end that I think it was a 60 by 60 piece and I... I felt like the colour palette was a bit too samey to do for that long. Plus I wasn't entirely wild about the rendering of the eyes of the animal in it. I can't remember what kind of animal it was, maybe a leopard. But anyway, this one is quite similar in terms of colour palette and even animal, because this is a jaguar and I think that was something like a panther, but it's so much smaller that the more limited colour palette won't matter to me as much. That was my thinking anyway. And again, like the rendering around the eyes, I wasn't over the moon with, but I think they've done a very good job in the space that they have. And I'm happy with the compromise to get a smaller painting. So one AB on this one, and then three fairy dust drills. Ooh, and L is, I believe, iridescent. If my inner DAC geek has remembered the codes properly, that would be an iridescent drill. So that's cool to have a nice mixture. And you see what I mean about the colour palette. It's very, very blue and green, <laughs> which are colours that I love. I just, I like variety. So that's, that's why it was an issue with the bigger one. I do like the pops of pink though. Look at all those coming through there. Gorgeous. So I'll have a quick peek at the drills. There are two of my fairy dust drills. A nice sort of, well I was going to say turquoisey green but it's really more of a green. And then this gorgeous like muted lilac-y tone. Very pretty. And quite a few of those. And then I've got quite a lot of these darker colours here. And there is my AB. That's a very pretty shade, actually, isn't it? And what else have I got? Oh, that's a big long strip. <laughs> uh, ah, here is my crystal drill. I was right. It's a crystal drill, as I, I generally call them. But in DAC terminology, it's an iridescent drill. I check that's in focus but yeah very pretty I'm excited to see where that goes I did watch sneak peek for this one to decide if I wanted to buy it but I can't remember much from it because I have a memory like a sieve um where's that last fairy dust drill going hiding may as well show you them all as I've got them out ah there it is oh and it's got a stowaway <laughs> a little brown round drill there you are. It's, it's a silvery effect, isn't it? How pretty is that going to be? Okay. So, let me get these out of the way. And take a look. I think this is the same size as that little spangler, isn't it? So we should be able to show you the whole thing. absolutely beautiful however samey they might be in places okay so um yeah I can barely make out the lady's face on the canvas it's funny isn't it and then of course once I've placed the drills it will absolutely make sense but yeah sometimes the canvas you can you can see all of the details in it anyway oh I've just looked in the viewfinder actually and it's perfectly clear in there it's just one of those 
difference between in person and on camera things anyway i'm babbling focus cat so number one is the symbol for the pink ab and that is everywhere through this and up here so all those bits are going to be really highly accented with the ab and then the dot is that crystal drill which is all through here wow i mean in the image it does have a really glowy effect so it absolutely makes sense but yeah DAC have gone for it with the rendering of that that's awesome <laughs> i think that's going to look really fun i don't see the crystal drills anywhere else so i think they're just in the moon and then i've got a sort of forwards arrow is one of the um what's the word i'm looking for fairy dust drills so i see a little bit of that round here and just a few little bits all through there and then this little guy i think pe i've seen people refer to that as a pregnant stick symbol <laughs> which is hilarious um it's a purple so that's yeah i mean as you can imagine because there's certain areas of the painting that are pinky purple i see that all through those because there was quite a lot of that one wasn't there and then there is a k which is a green um fairy dust drill so there's some of that up here and up here a little bit over there and there but not not too much of that one so yeah I can't wait to see this with drills down on it actually like look at those and then picture those on here surrounded by a b's and normal drills as well and that is going to be so super pretty i wouldn't say there's a huge amount of color blocking available on this one there's little bits you know through the moon there's very small sections of blocks of color but it's going to be a fairly intensive one, I think, to work on, but small enough that that's, that's fine and dandy. So, yeah, really happy with that one. OK, let me get this one packed away and then I will move on to my next painting. Next up is Domestic Cat, my school run purchase when I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I think I also thought it, it would be nice to get one round painting even though I couldn't bring myself to choose round for any of the ones that I did have a choice with. I think where they don't offer a choice, it's often because they feel like it will look better in one or the other. And I'm quite happy to go with that as someone who works with both. knocking everything so katie limpscum again is that her name i'm gonna look it up and then i'm, I'm sh sure it was lipscum um i'll put it on the screen <laughs> if it is something else but yeah i don't know if i've done any by her before she might be the artist that did periton that i had but i did end up destashing that one this is what I do because I really enjoy it. I enjoy continuing to buy new releases and my tastes change. So after a while, if I have a kit that I think, well, I do still really love it, but you know, I've, I've not got round to it in all this time, I will destash it and then purchase more, which is, yeah, it's a very privileged spoiled position to be in, but um, that is what I do. So here is my washi tape this time. Very cool. And I have another rose. And that is a gorgeous sort of dusky violet colour, I'll call that. Why is my camera struggling so much today to focus? But there you go. Very pretty. I do love these delicate little roses. Okay, back into the bag you go. There's no tweezers in this one as it's a round kit. That's the only difference that you get between the two kits. At the moment anyway, because there is going to be a new version of the tool kit at some point because Diamond Art Club are phasing out the cover minders and we don't know what other changes they're going to be making at that point. 
pizza. Here we go. Oops, that's come a bit unraveled. So, here is my image. Isn't he lovely? Or she, I don't know. I've had Siamese cats in the past. I don't know, is this a rag doll maybe? From the shape of the face and the fur? I'm not sure. Um, but I love the colour point effect. I've had Siamese cats in the past, well my parents did, and I actually have a British short hair who is a colour point, a lilac colour point. I do love colour point cats. <laughs> 66 colours, which I don't think I remembered there were that many in this one. Um, five of them are ABs. So plenty of AB action and one fairy dust drill. So yeah, lots going on in this one. Look at this bright, joyful colour palette. Oh, all of my favourite colours are here. <laughs> all the orangey yellows and the pinks and greens and blues and teals and turquoise and yeah, gorgeous. So I see one AB there. You've seen plenty of ABs now. I don't think I'm going to get these out just because I struggled to get the last lot back in and because this video is probably really long already. But you can see there the fairy dust drill. And one for one, one for one. There's three bags of that one for one, the white AB. So you can kind of guess. I'll look in a minute, but I guess there's going to be some in here and then in these bubbles. But yeah, there's going to be quite a lot of it, isn't there? I bet all these bright sections are really heavily accented, which is going to be beautiful. Okay. The other reason I'm trying to crack on is my voice is starting to get a bit husky. <laughs> Done a lot of talking today. It's the second video I filmed and this is a long one. Oops. so many animal pieces in my stash now just so often drawn to them and cats are my favorite animals so you know it's a no-brainer that I was going to pick this up at some point and I thought why am I wish listing it when I could have it today at 30% off so I did there we are oh it's so cool I love it I'm really happy I got it um so that's the bottom half and then I'll just show you the rest of it his beautiful blue eyes. <laughs> so I will do a quick pan over this one as it's too long for me to show in one go. Um, and then I am going to come back and look for those special drills like usual. So, special drill watch. And also, I think a fair amount of confetti, it's fair to say, isn't it? After that pan over, like there's quite a lot of confetti bits here because there's sort of straight line type things like whisker and fur, except they're going at different angles on the painting. And this bottom section as well. I mean, there are some blocks, but there's a lot of kind of in-between zone stuff where it's not total confetti, but it's also really not colour blocking. However, the top section and this side bit does have a few more blocks to be going on with. To be honest, I can't multi-place with that many um, drills at a time with rounds. So it doesn't make that much difference to me. But yeah, I, I, I think all the detail in the cat's face is going to be totally worth it. So I've got one, two, three, four and a dot as the codes for my ABs. 
So green one. There's some down here and all up here. And then a little bit up there. Um, the two. There's some around here outlining his eye. And not seeing a huge amount of that one. A little bit down here. This is sort of greyish colour. So it's just used to shade in, in the sort of sections of colour down here. A little bit more of a block there. Three is a pink AB. So looking at the pink sections and yep, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit over there in the pink bit of his ear. Four is a light yellow and it looks like there's a bit more of that one because I do see that in quite a few strips around the place. Um, any more up here? No, I thought there would be more ABs in the bright sections, didn't I? Got that wrong. Oh, the whiskers are going up there. And then there's a bit of four over here and down here. So that one's kind of peppered around lots of places. The white dot, there is masses of it. Well, obviously, I just showed you there were three bags of that. So there would have to be, wouldn't there? Um, so that's all around here and his whiskers blocks of it going up through this section and then that is one bit I did get right is that it's it's these bubbles and a nice outline of his head here and then the last one is this sort of squiggly symbol for my fairy dust drill and where is that hiding there's a little bit over there And down here, so quite a lot down in this bottom right hand corner and a little bit here heading up into the cat. I thought there might be some in his eyes, but no, those are all just normal drills apart from the, the white ABs on one side. So yeah, it's a really joyfully colourful painting for any cat lovers out there. And I think it's going to look gorgeous when it's done because rounds are always a bit shinier than squares anyway. So for a painting like this with like the bubbles and the sparkle, I can see why rounds might be chosen. Um, so yeah, I get that and I really, really like it. Okay, one more painting to show you. You'll be glad to hear the end of my voice. <laughs> but thank you very much if you are still with me at this point in the video. Okay, and lastly, I have my kind of rogue, not my usual style purchase, Satura. I like to do that anyway. I, I like, I don't like pigeonholing myself, I suppose. That, like there are certain things that I like that I'm much more likely to go for. But equally, if I like something and it's not my usual style, I'm gonna go for it anyway. I don't tend to hang my paintings and I guess maybe that's part of it because I'm not looking at a painting thinking, oh, but where would I hang that up in my house? It's, it's not my usual sort of artwork. I'm just thinking, do I like the image? Yes. Does it look like it would be fun to work on? Yes. And that's that's how I make my decision. Anyway, it's 55.8 by 86 centimetres. So it's quite long and thin, but you know, it's sort of medium-ish size still. Which is another selling point because you know, if it's not my usual sort of thing and it's massive, that would probably be less appealing. Oh, forgot to put my sticker on. Not looking forward to trying to wrestle these into the cupboard of doom later. Last toolkit. Did I get anything different? <laughs> a lot of macarons and roses so far. Oh, <laughs> it's this guy again. It's, it's definitely the second I've unboxed of this today. I can't remember if it was on this video or not or on a different one that I filmed, but yeah, <laughs> I do love them. I probably don't need five or six of them. <laughs> I really must gift some of those. Oh, and the washi. Oops. Lovely green flowery pattern there. Very pretty. Let's 
tell you what, I've had an absolute ball unboxing all of these today. I love it. It really is like Christmas come early. Okay. So, I've got two sheets because I've got 71 colours. And oh my gosh, those are all ABs. How many have I got? Wow. Okay, so I've got two ABs, four fairy dust drills. I think I said ABs before, but you've watched enough of these now. You probably corrected for me. And then K. Now, what is that? Is that the metallic ones that they do? I can't remember what they're called. I'll look it up and put it on the screen. Um, but yeah, I think that is the, the sort of metallic ones that they do. And I think I remember that from the sneak peek now. So yeah, lovely colour palette. Look at all those. I always find it a really good way to kind of get the gist of the colour palette just looking at the stickers because they really give you an insight. The rendering of this just looked beautiful as well in the sneak peek. That was another big tick for me. I know a lot of people who were fans of Margaret Morales' style wondered how her kind of more sort of gentle, watercolour-y style of artwork would translate into Diamond Art Club's rendering style, because Diamond Art Club are known for doing quite um, like defined outlines and that kind of thing. Um, but so far, the three that they've done all look brilliant. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go in and find those drills, aren't I? Beautiful. Okay. There they are. They are. They're like, they're not, they sort of look like crystals um, from a distance. And then when you get up close, they have this metal effect. I wish I could remember what Diamond Art Club calls them. <laughs> I'll have looked it up by now and put it on the screen so you'll know. But yeah, they've got um, a sort of matte back and then the tops are like gold. Um, can I spot any others? No. So, there's a fairy dust drill. A very pale lilac-y colour. And actually there's one of the in-house produced extra drill shades that you don't get elsewhere. But that's your lot. I'm putting them away before they get unravelled. I fought with enough drill bags today. <laughs> I know this painting did sell out on Cyber Monday. So if you like the look of it, you will need to sign up for notifications. But I'm sure it will be back. blues and greens in my paintings today aren't there? You can easily tell what colours I gravitate towards <laughs> from my picks. Oops! <laughs> She's so long! There we are! Okay so that is the bottom half and then I'll just take you up to see the top half and her eyes are amazing. <laughs> it's just like, it looks like absolutely random drills on the canvas, but I can see just looking through the viewfinder how well they come together to produce those sort of like almost sleepy looking eyes that she's got. Oh, I love it. And it's gonna be fun to do something really different anyway. So she's a witch, I guess. She's got a witch's hat. And whoop, slightly sort of pointy fingers there. <laughs> but I know that that is just the original artwork style. Um, yeah, I'm seeing quite a lot of blocks of colour around. Smallish blocks, that is. No big areas of colour blocking, really. Um, but a fair amount of confetti. It's a sort of in between one or possibly tending a bit more towards confetti. Um, yeah, okay, well I'm gonna pan over it now so that I can get a bit more familiar with it and then I will come back and look for the special drills one more time. <laughs>
Okay, so one and two. The pink, oh, it's treble one. I love that DMC code. I should have showed you that, but it's a really vibrant treble one. Okay, so one and two. The pink, oh, it's treble one. I love that DMC code. I should have showed you that, but it's a really vibrant deep pink AB with a sort of silvery effect of the AB topping. I like it a lot. And two is a pale blue. So I see some of the two straight away over here and up up through this side and down here. So that's kind of in the background a lot. There seems to be quite a lot of it. It's here and the colours at the top are probably a bit too dark for it, but all through the background of the lower section. And then the one, there's some in her eyes. Is there any anywhere else? I'm not sure there is because it's a pretty deep pink. Yeah, just a few scattered around, well, not scattered, <laughs> concentrated in her eyes. Now, the um, metallic diamond has the code L. So where was that? Here's some, so these stars and this which in her um, kind of bodice type thing. Uh, a few bits scattered around here, the sort of goldy bits in her dress and there. And then there's quite a bit here. So that's the sort of, again, patterns in her dress and stars and things. A little bit even in her eyes. And then up here, the moon in her hat. And then that star over there. So yeah, actually quite a lot of it. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so um, peppered through the canvas. That's fun. And then fairy dust drills. So tea, green tea. Um, shading wise, it looks like it would be up here, but I can't spot it. Ah, here's some over here. A little bit anyway. spotting a huge amount of that and I don't want to keep you here while I look for it so I'm going to say there's probably not masses of that one I just see little bits around here and here here is some of it as well and then I've got this purple triangle type thing there's a little bit around here a little bit over here here and here and just all these purpley sections seem to have a tiny bit of that in and I've got my sort of beige stop sign and a slash for the other two. Um, where are you two? Lots of the slash ones all around here and all up around her hair and face. So that's going to be fun. And then the stop sign type thing. Um, there's a little bit around there. So shading in with that and actually yeah it's in all the same sorts of places because they look quite similar they really are similar shades and, and they're just you know used to bring in those depths <laughs> okay so there is Satura that is the end of my Black Friday and Cyber Monday haul there's quite a lot of it um, if you have stuck with me till the end, I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please consider dropping a like on the video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And, you know, thank you very much for joining me. Um, and yeah, I will hopefully see you again soon. I hope that you were able to pick up everything that you wanted to get this Black Friday and Cyber Monday, whether that was in diamond painting or, or anything else. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.